Hello and welcome to Community Conversations. I'm your host, KK Kaneshiro. The Fremont Unified School District is committed to providing the safest possible environment for its students and staff. An essential part of that pledge is making potentially life-saving tools and equipment ready and accessible to treat individuals before help arrives. Already equipped with defib defibrillators and on, on every campus, FUSD is now proud to have trauma kits installed at every school and facility to assist in emergency situations. The district has also partnered with, partnered with the Fremont Police Department to train staff members in its use. And here to tell us more is Fremont Police Officer Ryan Labou and Fremont Unified Services Coordinator Cheryl Knight. You have a long title. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for bo uh, both of you for being here. Thank you for but having us. Tell us right now, how did this whole program start? Who thought of it? Why was it important to even bring it to life? What's the start? start? Okay, I'll start. <laughs> um, as an Air Force Reserve officer, we were trained in a program called Stop the Bleed. And it basically, and Ryan will talk a little bit more about it when he gets into his piece, but it talks about tourniquets mm -hmm. and it talks about different kind of techniques that we can use if we had a mass casualty incident, which could be an earthquake, active shooter, any of those different right. things that you can have. So right. I was trained on it. I came back to district and I said, we need this class and we need the equipment for it. So I started working on the district side and I was working with some of the other police officers and I said, do you have somebody that would, would be, love to be part of this training? Mm -hmm. He goes, I absolutely do. And so I met Ryan and we've been, this year we started in, back in when school started in August and we've been training about every other week at different school sites and here at the district office. So wow. we don't call it Stop the Bleed because I was afraid that the educators would go, <laughs> I'm not going to that class. So we call it School-Based Trauma. Yep. And people have really, really, it's a hands-on class and people have really enjoyed it. So okay. that's where it kind of started. So what is in the kits? They contain some, some basic life-saving supplies that can be used, like Cheryl said, in, in a variety of situations. Obviously the worst case scenario, the active shooter or killer. In the kits, there's tourniquets, okay. which can be used on the extremities to stop massive bleeding. There is some gauze that is impregnated with some clotting agent that helps speed up blood clotting. Good, that can be good. used uh, to pack wounds. Mm -hmm. Some pressure dressings. On top of that, there's also something called an occlusive dressing. It's to seal up wounds to the chest cavity, uh, penetrating trauma to the chest cavity that can cause uh, collapsed lungs and increased pressure in the chest cavity right. that creates a, a pretty bad situation. On top of that, there's also some shears for cutting away clothing, uh, a space blanket, it's basically just aluminum foil uh, for keeping people warm and treating them for shock. Now, my first question hearing about this great program is, was the fire department also included in this program or how does that work? Actually, the fire department wasn't included no. in this program, okay. but I knew that my first go-to was the police department because we have more of a, an opportunity to be because of the school resource officers right. that we have and so I reached out to them and they had already been Ryan had already been teaching a portion of this this okay. class so that's okay. why and I got what I needed from the police department <laughs> so I didn't call any further so that's kind of where how we but it does make sense you have a lot of SROs all throughout our campuses Absolutely. which is great yeah. so in this training the SROs, teachers, principals, nursing staff are all in par a part of this training? Is that how this it's works? It's a volunteer training at okay. this point, and it's not a certification, it's just an awareness training, so it's a one time okay. only. Okay. And so we have put, we have all the schools received, and we have one of the kits here that has the, the trauma kits in it that Ryan described. Um, we put it out there, we've given all the schools, kits are all hung along with their AEDs, and we said, okay, so. They don't, don't do us any good just hanging there without any training. So right. the schools are, we have a calendar that we started at the beginning of the year with classes already here at the district office. And we've told schools, if you want us to come out to your staff meetings, if you want to pick a date that's not on our calendar, we'd be glad to work okay. it into our calendar. And so the schools have been slowly getting on the, the training piece yes. and, and it's getting more, the awareness is out there. But the kids are all out there, but if they don't know what to do with them. Right, it's useless. Right. So what about students who are interested in helping should an earthquake happen? Is that in the future that they can get involved with the training? Or? We've talked about that. Uh, there is the potential for that in the future. We run into to some obstacles with that where obviously if they were under 18, we'd have to get parent uh, approval yeah. to, to yeah. teach these skills to them. And on top of that, there is some pretty rough subject matter right. that we have to address as part of the training. Okay, so. yeah, probably too little much for young ears. Well, so 
When you first brought this program on, did you pick certain campuses to have this first, or was it since the get-go, all campuses get it? And then how was this uh, rolled out? We, I rolled it out at the principal's meeting with the directors of elementary education and secondary education. And we also um, presented at the district safety committee okay. with risk management. So we started at that level to show them what we had and what okay. their thoughts were on it. Because we asked for funds. Right. So we got some right. help with actually purchasing the trauma kit. So we started at that level and then we brought it down to the directors. They allowed us to do some briefings with the principals and now it's just kind of getting on their time and on their schedules for the staff to get involved in it. And some staff just come and volunteer and come to the district office mm -hmm. um, uh, classes as well. I mean, we have it open for district office folks. And so there's all kinds of classes. Plus then we allow the schools to sign up on dates that works for staff meeting. We do a lot of staff meetings as well. That's good. So that works out well. The principal just says, this is what we're doing. Right. They bring everybody in, but it is a voluntary program. Okay. Yes. Any feedback from parents? Because I'm sure they would think this is a great thing. Have I you have, heard? I haven't heard much feedback, but the we did a class at Mission Valley Elementary, mm -hmm. and the principal approached us after the class and said we would, because there was only one kit at each school site, and our school sites are very large. Yeah. And so they would like, we would like to have more kits because of the, you know, how big our campuses are. And so she was willing, Ms. Mpelli was going to ask her parent teacher group to actually fund some of the kits. Oh, nice. So I think the word is getting out there slowly nice. and by, by asking for the, the help with that, I think we'll have more feedback from families. Because I'm sure the parents would be all over this. Because right. yes. this is a good thing. Absolutely. Okay. Um, yeah, if there's only one kit per campus, how do you pick the location? It's usually in a central area. We, we keep it in a, a, an enclosed area just because we don't want anybody like after right. hours or whatever, right. but it's usually the offices. Okay. And at the high schools, of course, we're gonna need to have more than one, but they're putting it in a central location, a staff room, the office, okay. health room, that kind of thing where it's visible and right. it can be seen. But it's hard when you have one. And in these kits, there's actually four individual trauma kits Oh, it's nice. a bag with that's got grab board. and go right Absolutely. so you can actually toss them out to other people and go you go that way I'll go this way so there's actually four kits but even on a high school campus four is nothing m is a minimum amount. right yeah. especially when we had that earthquake that's right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. so do you have other officers also involved or is it just you that's going around with Cheryl training I'm glad you asked I do have other officers involved what I've been doing is sending out messages throughout the department okay. to all of our CPR and first aid instructors. We currently have an in-house uh, CPR oh, and nice. first aid program okay. to certify our officers uh, on CPR, first aid, and AEDs along with some basic trauma care. So what I've done for several classes is brought along officers who generally have prior experience as EMTs, paramedics, uh, combat lifesavers where mm -hmm. they're trained to a higher level than the, the average uh, military member. Um, and have them help with instruction. There's been a couple officers that have shown up for a good amount of classes, one of which was at EMT nice. in Santa Clara County for several years. Nice, nice. Now, this is more than your basic first aid kit. Yes, I get it is. that. But is there a method or a process of always keeping this kit up to date? You know, restocked, or is there an inventory? Okay, we're going to remember to refill it because we used it for this situation. You know, is there. Anything in process? We haven't gotten that far yet, okay. as yet, and we hope we never have to use yes. them. Yeah. So they're not going to be like basic first aid kits where people go in and use them for band aids or whatever. Yes, born. So yeah. <laughs> no. So it doesn't have any of that in there. Okay. So unless we have something big, they won't be opened. Okay. So they will be, and that's why we want to train everybody because we right. don't want people, you know, it's got the medical information on. We don't want people just going in and using it on a day to day basis because they think there's Tylenol in and there. And once these are on the walls, they're not locked, are they? No. No. So, okay, you don't have to worry about that no. in an emergency. Mm -mm. Um, what are the key things students and families should know about dealing with an emergency while on campus? Is What's the process? Earthquake happens. Right, so an earthquake is something where, just like in first aid and CPR training, you're taught the first thing and the most important thing is scene safety and surveying your scene, uh, ascertaining whether or not it's safe for you to go help someone or safe for you to be in the area you're currently in. Okay. So with that kind of situation, it would be important for the person to 
be aware of their surroundings and determine whether or not they need to get out of the area before they start addressing any sorts of injuries. And in the event that there's a person that's unable to move, right. how to get that person out of the area if they can safely do so. Yeah. Yeah, um, falling debris is hard. Absolutely. Okay. In, in the event of an active shooter, mm -hmm. that's a little bit different circumstance, and that's why a lot of the schools are, are taught the run, hide, fight program mm -hmm. that uh, many parents are aware of nowadays. But on top of that, I would advocate for, for parents to educate themselves on some basic trauma care, because once you've run, hid, or fought and are no longer in direct uh, Danger. harm's way, yeah. You need to know how to take care of injuries that right. you or anyone else around you might have sustained. Yeah, that's so. amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I know you guys are being super humble here. Um, you've done a lot of work, but I know you've also had some help, and we'd like to publicly thank them. Can you tell us how, who else was involved with getting this program up and off mm -hmm. the ground? <laughs> so, okay, I'll, I'll briefly say it. Um, so my interaction really started with Sergeant Bokaj, so that mm -hmm. was, that's Sergeant Matt Bokaj. He works at the Fremont Police Department. He was the school resource officer sergeant, and I touched bases with him when I first had the idea cross my mind. Uh, the way it started was I spoke with a friend who was actually a teacher at Fremont Unified School District, and I asked him if he had any idea of what to do if yeah. there was an active shooter, active killer, or, or someone was severely injured, and when he told me no, I felt like that was... Ooh a large gap in yeah. Yeah. Uh, the chain of survival for, for saving someone's life. So I put together a, a PowerPoint and some basic skills that I thought I could easily teach to school district personnel, faculties, teachers, potentially even students eventually. And I talked with Sergeant Bokaj and said, hey, I'd really like to, to get this class going. Who can you put me in, in touch with? And that's when he put me in touch with Cheryl, which really got this Going. Uh, going yeah I was working on it from my end so I was kind of it, it actually it worked out perfectly yes. in our timeline yes. and you know I work out of student support services and of course at the time Dr. Campbell was my boss and he was like Cheryl you do whatever you need to do we had fun we had half of the funds out of our department to pay for the you know to purchase the kits and then I went to business office and I was working with Brian Wakefield risk management helped us out with the safety committee so there was a lot of people that were kind of you know, instrumental in, right. but a lot of, it's interesting because a lot of folks, like Ryan said, when he approached his, te his friend that was a teacher, they don't even understand that there's something missing yeah. in, in this information in our campuses. And so I think every time, it's just like trying to get the schools to sign up and say, hey, mm -hmm. come to our school site. Right. They don't know about it yet. And then they come to the class and they're like, I'm calling my friend and, and I'm gonna, you know, I had one of the principals, Ms. Mapelli, uh, that said, she took one of the first classes and she went to the principal's meeting and she said, it's the best class that I've ever been to in the district. Nice. And so we're like, we need the cheerleaders. Yes. It's, like, it's, a, it's a great, great class. <laughs> nice. You know, and I finally, and Dr. Campbell left a few weeks ago and I said, before you leave district, because you're going to another district, you, he hadn't been to our, my class yet, or our class, and I said, mm -hmm. you need to come to the class and number one, see what it is yeah. that we're doing. And then you need to take it to your new district and say, hey, this is what we need here. Right. So he came to the class and he's like, oh my gosh, this is what I've been missing. <laughs> so it's like, you gotta come, because it's not educational based. It's not, no. so everybody kind of just shies. It's just one more thing that they have to yeah. do. Yeah. It, and it's not just for school. It's, it's if you stop and you're involved in a car wreck or mm -hmm. you see you're something. You're at the or, airport, you're right? anywhere. I mean, Absolutely. there's just so, it's just a huge, and people are like, where can we buy these kids? Because they want them for their cars. Yeah. And, and that kind of thing. So wow. it's not just, that's a compliment. It's a yeah, absolutely. Wow, it's great. Good it's, for you. It's just look at you, Cheryl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm passionate, and that's when I found Ryan. I'm like, we are going to be a team, so it's great. Now, I did. I I know you said that um, when it comes to FUSD staff, it is a voluntary training, yes. but for SROs, it's mandatory, right? Yes. So every police officer is trained in these basic trauma okay. skills, which really got me thinking that there's really no reason I can't provide on a voluntary basis the same training to teachers. It's really there's Good. nothing super complicated about it. It's just about getting over that initial hurdle where people think, oh my gosh, you know, someone's critically wounded or right. dying. 
what can I really do to help right. them? And the answer is you can actually do a lot. Yeah, good. I just want so. to, any of our parents who are watching, they know the police officer knows. If, <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, so that's a good thing. Yes. Oh, I cannot commend you guys enough for this. This is a great program. Thank you, Thank you Thank so you. much. Just from on a citizen's level, this is wonderful. And I hope you get more funding for more of these first aid kits, or I should say trauma kits and AEDs, because yeah. that's amazing too. Now, the training does cover the tra uh, trauma kits and the AE AEDs. I do not. I do not cover AEDs. Okay, so is uh, the AEDs training. a different training? They get that in CPR class. No. CPR classes. Okay. And so now that all the school sites have AEDs, that we just mm -hmm. finished placing at elementary within the last few months, the expectation is, and it's vol that's voluntary again, except okay. for administrators, yeah. that our staff yeah. get trained um, to do CPR, and then that includes the AEDs. Okay. Well, I cannot thank you enough for being on this show. You guys were fabulous. I hope you come back. Thank this you. has been wonderful. Thank you for and congratulations us. again. Thank you. From everyone here at Community Conversations, we appreciate you watching and we'll see you next time. Thank you.